There are two forms of power, hard power and soft power. Hard power, I listen to you because you have the means and the willingness to use those means to enforce compliance. Soft power, I choose to listen to you. It doesn't matter what type of power we're talking about, hard or soft, both gain their legitimacy through moral authority. You lose your moral authority, you no longer have the right to wield power. When those who have the means and willingness to use those means to force compliance lose their moral authority, they become no different than the recess bully. They don't have any legitimate right to your lunch money, but they're going to take it anyhow because they can. They're tyrants. When soft power loses its moral authority, people just stop listening. They fade away, become irrelevant. Of the two types of power, soft power is much more powerful than hard power. Turns out, persuasion is way more influential than force. I'm old enough to remember Walter Cronkite. When he retired, he was heralded as the most trusted man in America. Every weeknight, 5.30 Central, three-quarters of the country would tune in to hear Walter tell them all about what had happened that day. They believed they could trust him, that he would tell them the truth. Good old Walter couldn't keep his cake hole shut. In his autobiography, he bragged he wasn't a neutral conveyor of facts. He had an agenda, an ideology. He knew that the rubes and hicks all across America wouldn't agree with what he was selling. So he lied. He twisted and manipulated the facts to trick people into going along with his agenda. Ever since Walter's revelations, trust in media, trust in all social institutions for that matter, have nosedived. Every time you think they can't go any lower, they come along and do something that proves, huh, no, they can go a lot lower. This loss of moral authority has been devastating to entertainment and its related media. We have the rise of social media. We are now in the era of soft power. We're in the era of what some would call versimilitude, authenticity, all fancy ways of saying honesty. Here on YouTube and other social media platforms, the way a person gains power and influence is if the audience trusts them, believes they're being honest and truthful. This is the very definition of soft power. People choose to watch choose to like and subscribe <clears throat> because they believe the person they're watching has moral authority. Personal integrity and reputation are everything because the moment the audience sniffs out inauthenticity, deceit, dishonesty, moral authority goes up in smoke along with any soft power. I've already talked about soft power will defeat hard power, but what happens if soft power goes up against soft power? Spent the day out with the family yesterday. When I came home, I checked social media, and I saw this plastered everywhere. The conversation has been the equivalent of, Gary's a poo-poo head. Uh-uh, uh-huh, uh-uh, oh yeah, you're a poo-poo head for liking Gary. Oh yeah, you're a poo-poo head for not liking Gary. Everybody is so busy slinging mud, they're missing the point. The reason why Grayson posted this in the first place. In full transparency, I like Gary. I'm subscribed to his channel. He says things I agree with. He says things I vehemently disagree with. And he says a lot of things I have no opinion on one way or the other. Grayson, prior to reading this post, I'd never heard of him before. I don't have a clue who he is. Now, to be fair to Grayson, there's a lot of people with influence in their areas of expertise who I don't know who they are. My point, I like Gary. I'm neutral to Grayson. We have a classic case of soft power attacking soft power. Grayson is saying, Gary lacks the moral authority to speak. You shouldn't listen to him. But I, on the other hand, do have moral authority. You should listen to me. If Grayson wants to undermine or outright destroy Gary's moral authority, he has several options. The best way is to present some damning evidence like video footage of Gary in a secret meeting with Kathleen Kennedy and Kevin Feige. They're giving him a suitcase full of money and the scripts for Gary's next five videos. It wouldn't matter who Grayson was, his moral authority, his agenda. Gary would have some splaining to do. 
or Grayson could offer an opinion. Look, folks, Gary is not my cup of tea. I don't like what he says. I disagree with his positions. I'm opposed to his politics. I don't approve of the people he associates with. Here are examples of what I'm talking about. Y'all decide for yourself if Gary's your cup of tea. Grayson doesn't take either one of those options. What he does, he puts the audience in a position where they have to choose between Grayson's moral authority and Nerdrotic's moral authority. At this point, who Gary is, what he might or might not have said or done, is irrelevant. Grayson's moral authority is now on trial. Everything hinges on the argument Grayson is going to make. Now again, full transparency, my bias. Anybody who puts me in a position to where I'm being forced to choose between them and somebody else, I'm going to view that as emotional blackmail. I'm going to tell that person to go pound sand. Grayson, buddy, your moral authority is already on shaky ground with me. I was taught when critiquing somebody's work to ask three questions. What's the argument being made? Why are they making the argument? And what do they expect of me if I agree to their argument? To Grayson's credit, he's up front with what he's trying to accomplish and what he wants of us, the audience. Nerd Roddick? He's a piece of garbage who's been allowed to operate among us far too long. Grayson is making a moral argument. Gary's a bad man. We should reject him. Grayson starts his argument that Gary's a fraud. Gary hangs out with frauds. They all know they're frauds because they publicly admit to being frauds. In this era of authenticity, an accusation of being a fraud, a fake, is serious business. Grayson offers up some evidence. Jeremy, co-host of Friday Night Tights, saying everybody here is a grifter, i.e. a fraud, a fake, a con man. I'm ignoring any potential context for Jeremy's words. I'm only evaluating Grayson's argument on its own merits. Having the accusation of fraud and somebody admitting publicly to fraud is potentially damning. In the very next post, though, Grayson's argument starts to go off the rails because now he claims to have the ability to speak for the audience. Yeah, they might have some minor complaints, but they only care because the bad man manipulates them. Grayson's argument completely loses the plot. The next post, Grayson claims to be a mind reader. He knows what's in Gary's heart, what drives and motivates him. Grayson comes right out and says it. Gary's a poo-poo head. In fact, he's a super poo-poo head. Then he goes pure ad hominem, straight up personal attack. Grayson is no longer making an argument. He's doing what the great philosopher Dalton described as combining sounds to elicit an emotional response. Suddenly, Grayson switches gears. He starts talking about calendars, specific cities within the United States, politics. Grayson concludes with ideology and agenda. I interpret this to be the foundation, the whole point of Grayson's argument why he wants to destroy Gary's moral authority. Gary makes jokes that Grayson doesn't approve of because those jokes go against Grayson's ideology. Oh, Grayson isn't making a moral argument. He's making an ideological argument. But Grayson isn't being honest. He's trying to hide his ideology behind morality. He's trying to conflate the two. I've said earlier in the video, when hard power comes into conflict with soft power, more often than not, soft power is going to win. Do you all think it's because hard power says, oh, soft power, we give up? No. Hard power, especially institutional power, wants to hold on to power. And as they become more tyrannical, they resent sharing power with soft power. So oftentimes, they're willing to do anything to eliminate soft power. Misrepresentations, distortions, manipulation, lies, censorship, violence. Why does soft power still win more often than not? You have to have moral authority if you want to challenge somebody else's moral authority. But the moment you start lying, deceiving, manipulating, censoring, attacking, you lose your moral authority. At that point, what you say or do no longer matters. 
You get weaker as they get stronger. People choose to listen to soft power. As long as soft power continues to be honest, authentic, people will continue to listen to them. But the moment soft power betrays that trust, they're done. The only thing that can destroy soft power is soft power. This problem is only exacerbated when you have soft power attacking soft power. You're putting people in a position where they feel like they're going to have to choose. You're already in morally ambiguous territory. You better bring the goods. Grayson sought to destroy Gary's soft power, his social influence, by attacking Gary's moral authority. What Grayson accomplished? He destroyed his own moral authority. He revealed he's willing to call people the most vile names all because they disagree with his ideology. Grayson is nothing more than a smear merchant. Part of my architectural training is pattern recognition. As social institutions like media, entertainment collapse and die, they're still desperately trying to hold on to power. They know the truth in Mark Twain's old adage, a lie will travel around the world before the truth has time to put on its boots. But they also know Lies have a limited shelf life, whereas the truth is forever. Social media is seeing the rise of independent voices who are gaining soft power. Legacy entertainment, legacy media do not want to lose their power to these new voices. So they're willing to say, do anything to eliminate the new soft power. We keep seeing the same patterns over and over again. New independent voice starts gaining some influence, a little bit of soft power. Legacy entertainment, legacy media becomes aware of that new independent voice. They don't like what that voice is saying. So they start the smears, the attacks, the lies, manipulations, mistruths, censorship. The irony, legacy media, legacy entertainment are acting as a furnace, purifying this new soft power. They're sniffing out the fakes and frauds, the grifters, but they're also making it easier to find those who are being truly authentic. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about, and until next time, you all be safe. If you all are still here, thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time, and feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.